I'm Will Bishop, part of the Miro Developer Relations team. In this second in-depth training module, we'll walk through how you can leverage both the Web SDK and the REST API in a single Miro app step-by-step. -step. This is the second in-depth module in our developer onboarding journey after a series of initial onboarding tasks. Subsequent modules will go even deeper, progressing along with our guided onboarding journey with topics like integrating Miro with a third party and other more nuanced use cases. Upon completing this module, you'll know all the steps necessary to leverage both the Web SDK and the REST API from a single Miro boilerplate application. If you haven't already, you can check out our guided onboarding journey at developers.miro.com. This is a great place to start before going through this in-depth module, though it's not required. Now, before we dive in, let's quickly cover the four main learning objectives of this module. First, we'll review the recommended prerequisites for this module. Second, we'll explain how joint authorization between the Web SDK and the REST API works. Third, we'll walk through some important details around the developer app settings. Fourth, we'll walk through an example leveraging the Web SDK. And lastly, we'll incorporate the REST API into this sample app, making it truly full stack. To start, let's take a quick look at the recommended onboarding tasks for this training module in particular. We recommend completing tasks five through seven and in-depth training module one, which cover exercises such as creating your first Miro app from scratch, incorporating Miro tone, and more. In our first training, create your first Miro app locally, we leveraged create Miro app from the command line to generate a basic Miro application using the web SDK. This training will start right where we left off from the same application. If you haven't yet created a Miro app using create Miro app from the command line, you'll want to pause here and first go through training number one Create your first Miro app locally. All right, let's dive into the first part of building a full stack Miro app, which is understanding how authorization works when leveraging both the Web SDK and the REST API. To start off, it's important to note that the Web SDK and REST API both have their own respective authorization methods. In a typical implementation, the Web SDK is authorized by an end user from the UI via a modal and the REST API leverages OAuth 2.0 in order to generate an access token that can be used on a user's behalf. When you're building a full stack Miro app, or an app that uses both the Web SDK and REST API, you'll want to ensure that both capabilities are successfully authorized. To make things easier, we've set up a flow that allows end users to authorize both the Web SDK and the REST API when interacting with a full stack Miro app. This looks a little bit like this. First, an end user will launch an app from the left-hand toolbar, this will reveal the auth window for the Web SDK. Next, the user will authorize the Web SDK app, and when this is done, it will automatically trigger the OAuth 2.0 flow for authorizing the REST API for apps that leverage both capabilities. You'll notice that a redirect URL for the OAuth portion of the authorization is referenced at the bottom of the main auth modal in this instance. This is a URL that is specified in the app settings, which we'll walk through in more detail in just a moment. When this redirect URL is hit, your app will run the OAuth 2.0 flow and generate an access token for your backend. This all happens on your app's backend and is not visible to end users. Rather, they'll be brought directly to the Web SDK frontend on success. Okay, but why do we do this? Well, the reason we do this is because some apps will use just the Web SDK and some integrations may use just the REST API. Thus, they both have their own authorization methods. But when building a full stack Miro app, we want to ensure that the end users don't have to worry about separate authorization for each component of your app. So instead, we've included a developer app setting that ensures when the Web SDK is authorized, the REST API is authorized at the same time, allowing your app and its end users to seamlessly leverage both in one application. So we have a bit of a better understanding about how the Web SDK and REST API handle authorization, but to ensure we can build a truly full stack app that leverages both, we need to ensure we handle our developer app settings in Miro appropriately, and that these capabilities can communicate with each other respectively. To do this, we'll navigate to the developer app that we created in Miro during the initial flow where we created our boilerplate app from the command line using create Miro app. When we open up our app configuration settings, we'll see the section where we can specify a redirect URL for our app's OAuth 2.0 flow. Apps created with create Miro app will include a default redirect URL, which we can leave as is. However, we will want to make sure that the use this URI for SDK authorization option is checked off. Without this setting, our Web SDK and REST API authorizations will not communicate with each other 
and our full stack app won't function as intended when end users authorize it. But let's not take my word for it. Let's walk through this in a bit more detail now. Using the same template as before, the npx create Miro app using the Next.js option, we're going to go ahead and show what happens when you kick off this app from the front end and how it automatically starts the OAuth 2.0 flow on the back end, authorizing the REST API. This way, you have access to both the Web SDK and the REST API, but an end user only has to authorize once. So to recap real quick, within our developer app settings, we want to make sure that the redirect URI for OAuth 2.0 that we have specified says use for SDK auth. This is an option that you'll have to select manually like this. Once this is selected, we can go ahead and make sure that we're running our app. So we'll run npm run start. And we can see that because we haven't authorized the app yet, we'll see an error in the console related to uh, no token or no authorization. And this is expected because we haven't gone to our mirror board yet to actually authorize this app. But if we go there now and we click on our app, this is the Web SDK authorization modal. If we click allow, this will authorize the Web SDK and then it'll authorize the REST API, which is why we're not getting this error anymore. But let's back up a moment. I'm going to go ahead and go to my profile settings. And I'm going to actually uninstall this app just for me for testing purposes so that I can reauthorize. Now, if I go back to our code, I'm going to go to the redirect.ts option uh, that's in the pages directory underneath the API folder. And I'm going to add a, a simple line here to show where the OAuth 2.0 flow is actually being automatically kicked off. And this is because we're specifying our redirect URI, which is API slash redirect. I'm going to go back to my application, go back to my board. I'll we'll authorize one more time. And here we can see in console, we see I'm part of the auth 2.0 flow getting kicked off. Here's my code. So we're logging that code, but we also see that we authorize on the front end. So here we have access to everything we need. Also notice that we immediately have access to uh, web SDK methods like this to create a sticky, but also we will be able to leverage the REST API now because we have a code that we can exchange for an access token. And this happens here in line 19, where we exchange the code for an access token, and then we can make API calls from our app directly. And just like that, we've authorized our full stack app by ensuring that we have joint authorization configured in our developer app settings, and end users will experience just one request to authorize an app initially, kicking off the necessary flows on the back end as well. Okay, so we've covered the nuances of authorization, so now it's time to start adding some functionality to our app. The first thing we'll do is leverage the Web SDK's create image method to create a new image item on our mirror board programmatically. Let's take a closer look. Follow along as we leverage the create image method from the Web SDK to create an image on a mirror board. Here we have Next.js application that has the Miro API client already installed and leverages the web SDK as we can see on the right hand side here. So currently our app has very limited functionality, but what we want to do is we want to add both web SDK and rest API functionality. So to start, let's take a look at the web SDK. Uh, if you might recall, we had a button previously to add sticky notes to the board. Well, let's start by adding something a bit more creative, uh, like an image. So if we go down to our HTML that we're returning at the bottom of this index.tsx, we currently have a couple of buttons commented out, but I'm going to go ahead and uncomment out the button for the web SDK. So you can see now that we have an SDK button. When we click on this button, it's going to call this SDK handler function. All right, but where is this function? Well, Let's go back up here and we see on line 53, we have a function called SDK handler, and I'm going to uncomment out the SDK method that creates an image. So here we're taking essentially right out of the documentation, the create image method, and we're providing a URL for an image that we'd like to create. And so when this button is clicked, this SDK handler will be called. So let's save this and give this button a shot. 
All right, so we can see this created a nice image of a very beautiful pug. And now we have the SDK portion of this app, you know, functioning and, and doing a little bit here on the board. There's lots of other web SDK methods we could use. Uh, it's also possible to upload images locally using the web SDK. But for the purposes of this demo, we're just going to use this URL. But just keep in mind that this is just the tip of the iceberg for what you can do with the web SDK. All right, so far we've explored how joint authorization is handled and leveraged the web SDK to create an image on our board. Now let's build on this and add some REST API functionality to our full stack application. For this, we'll leverage the REST API's get image endpoint to read some details about the image that we created with the web SDK. We'll send these details from our backend to the front end and display them in the developer console. Let's jump in. Follow along as we leverage the REST API and create a REST handler in our Next.js app. So we have another button that'll uncomment out here. That's going to be our button dedicated to initiating a call to the REST API. But in order to actually call the REST API, there's a few steps we need to take. To begin, we have this function, REST handler, which currently doesn't exist. So let's start there. We have just a boilerplate function here, and essentially when this button is clicked, we'd like to initiate a request to the REST API. But actually, in order to do this, we first need to create an API handler on our backend. So you can see here, if we uncomment this out, we want to make a request to an endpoint called REST request. So to do this, we're going to create a new endpoint under API in our Next.js scaffolding. We'll call this REST request dot ts and here we're going to actually want to leverage the miro api client and some of its built-in properties i'm going to paste in some scaffolding that we can use at the beginning we're importing the init miro functionality from the init miro file here which is essentially instantiating the miro api client so a lot of the work's already been done for us here and we're just going to leverage it in this REST request API handler. So we start by creating a new instance of the Miro API client, and then we'll start with a basic call to get some board info. This is actually similar to the method we're using in index.tsx to call this initial get boards detail that's showing over here. But back to REST request, once we have those board details, we can specify one of those boards in particular in this case, I'll just leverage a third board that I have, and then we're going to retrieve the images from that board. So what's happening here is we are attempting to make an API request leveraging the Miro API client. We're making that call to this endpoint of the Miro REST API, and then we have some error handling. So we're going to go ahead and save this, and then we're going to go back to our index.tsx, so now we have one more step, which is to actually tie back the information we're getting from our backend request and expose it in our front end. So we're going to take one more step and do exactly that. So we're going to retrieve the content that we called from the backend and then expose it here by sending it to the console. So this sample item dot data is actually the response that we're getting from this REST request API handler. And in this case, we're just going to send this data to the console to show how we're bringing the content from the REST API to our front end in this kind of full stack application. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And let's go ahead and we'll delete this image and just kind of start from scratch here. I'm going to open up the developer console so that we can see what's happening. And we'll start by testing out our SDK button to create an image on the board. And we've got our beautiful pug back in action. And now we're going to hit our rest button and see if we get information in the console. And we do. So we can see that our message, this image data was fetched using the rest API. And we're exposing the details of this image that we pulled from the get images endpoint. We have access to all sorts of things in here, like an image URL to actually download the image locally if we wish the title of the image, the image's position, and so on. This is a great example of using the REST API to complement the Web SDK. There may be scenarios where not everything that you want to do is possible with one or the other. 
So it's great to be able to complement them and create a full stack application like this that leverages both. Well, we're just logging this REST API information to the console, you know, you could of course take this one step further and manage, manipulate board items via the REST API as well, um, but you're not just limited to the web SDK. So here we've done both. All right, that was a lot at once. So let's quickly recap what we did. First, we created an API handler endpoint in our Next.js app under the pages API directory. Then we leveraged the baked in Miro API client. And lastly, we called our API handler from the front end and exposed our REST API response in the developer console. You can find a similar implementation of this in our sample app, Webhooks Manager. You can find the sample app in our GitHub repo, App Examples, under Miro for Developers. We've covered a lot at this point, from understanding the nuances of authorization in the Web SDK, REST API, and both of them together, to adding functionalities across capabilities. We've built a full stack Miro application that can leverage our Web SDK and REST API seamlessly together. Here's a quick look back at what we've covered. Miro's learning paths for getting up to speed and creating a full stack app, an overview of our authorization, developer app settings, creating an image with the Web SDK, and reading image details from the REST API. And that's it for this module. Now it's up to you to keep the momentum going. If you found this module on building a full stack Miro application helpful, the next in-depth training module in our onboarding journey will build on the foundation we've laid so far, further integrating Miro with a third party. Interested in seeing more content like this? Follow us on YouTube for more developer tutorials and join our developer community on Discord. See you around. Thank you.